Hey, this is Mark from Rightline Trading. I'm just going to do a mic check. Um, if you can hear me, can you please type yes in the uh, chat box? Okay, great. Uh, we're going to be starting in two minutes. Um, so just hang on and we're going to begin really, really shortly. I'm just going to give it right till four o'clock and then we're going to start. Hope everyone had a great, uh, great day trading today. Um, we had some real nice trades today. Well, I'm going to start. Um, and what, what you're going to be um, looking at today is our, um, our very unique uh, credit spread strategy um it's a strategy it's a strategy that you use when you don't want to buy options but you want to sell options and you're going to see that there are very specific instances where selling options can be extremely valuable and extremely profitable now i'm you know by nature i am not um a spread trader uh, I think that in general, you should have two strategies with options. Um, although you may want to do bull or bear call spreads, I mostly trade puts and calls. But the one thing that I do do is I do sell credit spreads at the right time. And I'm going to show you exactly the environment that we're going to, uh, that we need in order to trigger a great uh, credit spread. Now, just really quickly, this disclaimer that all signals trading opportunities you provide are for uh, demonstration educational purposes only. Everyone understands that um, uh, trading the markets is risky and you can lose a substantial amount of money. Um, always carefully consider fi your financial position prior to trading and never risk more uh, than you can afford to lose on any given trade. Now, just a little bit about myself real quickly. Um, I graduated from an Ivy League university. I went to the University of Pennsylvania uh, for eight years. Um, I, I majored in applied mathematics. And, and within uh, applied mathematics, I, I uh, focused in on mathematical modeling, which really falls right in line right now with the, uh, the way they do artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is really a form of ongoing mathematical modeling. Um, uh, I did my uh, thesis on um, uh, uh, the uh, optimal way to uh, undergo uh, underwater decompression schedules for the U.S. Navy. Um, when I was finished with my trading, I graduated uh, summa cum laude with honors. 
I was inducted into the Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society. Um, and it was always my goal um, in my career um, to go into um, re teaching and research. I applied to a, uh, a number of universities, uh, wound up taking a full-time position at Jefferson University. Um, while there, I published 15 peer-reviewed peer articles in top-tier journals. I was a full-time professor. I taught an enormous number of undergraduate and graduate students. I've always had the mindset of a scientist or teacher at an academician. I've, I've been an invited speaker internationally in many countries and an, an invited speaker um, in many cities domestically. And I believe I've mentored close to 30,000 traders in over the course of the last 12 years. Now, you're all looking for uh, a way to generate consistent income in any market using credit spreads. Now, credit spreads are an extremely powerful options configuration. And I've been doing it for so long, it's really just become rote. It's very formulaic. It doesn't require any discretion. You just have to pick the right stock in the right trading environment. I'm gonna show you exactly what that is. Now, one of the mistakes that a lot of options traders make is jumping between strategies instead of focusing and mastering on any particular one. Obviously, buying a call or buying a put in and of itself is real, really takes a lot of work um, to determine um, the expiration date and determine the target price. Um, selling credit spreads is a little bit different. It follows a very fixed formula, as I have mentioned. Now, what you want in order to grow an options account is you want a strategy that provides you with a lot of confidence. And you need a fundamental understanding of why the strategy works. Can't be a black box system you have to understand exactly why it's so powerful. Now you need to, you're told that may that you may not need to win more than 50% of your trades, but that is really a misnomer. The fact is you need to win close to 70% of your trades in order to achieve really solid profitability. Um, I know I see uh, options webinars all the time where they, they tell you you can win 33% or 25%, still make out like, you know, uh, uh, still make a ton of money. That is simply not true. And as I mentioned, it's got to be rules uh, based and you have to exert a lot of discipline uh, to prevent trades from blowing up and losing faith in the strategy. Now, once in a blue moon, you're gonna get a trade that loses. Um, there, there's actually a way to pretty much prevent all losers. Um, I may get into a little bit of it um, on the, um, uh, in this. Uh, and um, the fact of the matter is, I haven't taken a single loser on the system since I started it over a year and a half ago. Um, but that's a part of the system that I'm, I, you know, I, I may, I may um, uh, only acquaint the traders with to come aboard. It, it's a way of repairing the trades. You need a little bit more money in your account to employ it. But when you do, it really, really pays off tremendously. Now, credit spreads are a very simple and forgiving strategy. When you employ a credit spread, it's obviously an income a uh, generating strategy, but you will only need a mild directional view on the stock, underlying stock or ETF you're, that you're trading. And it's very forgiving because the trade does not have to go in your direction in order for you to make a significant amount of money. Now, if you buy a call, trade has to go in your direction. You buy a bull call spread, it has to go in your direction. When you sell a credit spread that's bullish, it does not have to go in your direction. 
Obviously, you want it to because that's going to provide you with your 100% of your credit, but you've got a lot of downside leeway in order to still walk away profitable on the trade. So you only have to have a mild uh, directional uh, bias. Now, there is obviously a very limited risk and limited reward. So you know how much money you can win and how much money you can lose on every trade um, before you take it. Again, comparing it to simply trading naked calls and puts, you know how much you can lose, but your upside is really unlimited. But you need a strong directional move in order to take you to profitability. Here, you do not need that. The stock can move sideways and you could still wind up making a significant amount of money. Now, why learn credit spread option strategies? Well, as I, you know, as I mentioned, you can profit um, if the underlying stock increases, decreases, or doesn't move at all. In fact, doesn't move at all and just move sideways in consolidation is terrific. If we don't get a one penny move up from the time we take the trade, we're ecstatic. Again, your loss is capped. So you never have to worry about a trade blowing up if the market make, makes a huge move against you. Obviously, position sizing is important. That's asset allocation. You don't want to take a $10,000 any in, in a $10,000 um, position size, you're going to position size appropriately based on the size of your account. And again, it's a very simple strategy. Uh, the two primary credit st strategies only have two components. I'm going to show you right here exactly how to do it. And in fact, when you when you when you walk away with, from this webinar, you're going to know exactly the strategy I use. Nothing is going to be hidden. And if you want to try to do this on your own, you, you can try it. Now, you may not be aware of the fact, but the market actually has five directions, not two, up or down. One direction is the stock moves sideways in very tight consolidation. The second is you have, it makes a very weak bullish move or a very weak bearish move. Now that's your anticipation that this is going to trend to the upside or trend to the downside, depending on the type of credit spread that you configure, but it doesn't have to move more than two or three cents in the direction that you want it to go. Now, if you believe it's going to make a huge leap up or a huge leap down, you're best off buying a call or buying a put. But if you buy a credit spread, it is also going to work for you, and you're going to reap 100% of the credit you receive when you take the trade. So this isn't a bad thing, but you can make a little bit more money if you would have had a call or if you would have had a put. So the best time to take a bullish credit spread is when you have the anticipation that the st underlying stock is going to make a mildly bullish move for a bullish credit spread, a mildly bearish move for a credit for a bearish credit spread, or it's just going to move sideways in consolidation. It's going to leap up. You want to leverage it with a call. Take a big collapse to the downside, you want to leverage it with a put. And there's some cases where you where you just happen to be not right. Um, you believe you're only going to take a, uh, uh, a modest move to the upside and the stock winds up skyrocketing. Um, it's still very, very nice. It takes, all, it takes all the pressure off you and you can just sit back and wait for the uh, position to expire and you're going to keep 100% of your credit. Same thing to the downside. Now, the question is, when do you want to be a buyer and when do you want to be the seller of an option? 
Um, and that's very, very important to understand if you want to trade options overall profitably. So you have to look at it um, from, the, from the perspective of being, um, uh, the market is an auction-based um, system. And you want to decide whether you want to be the auctioneer who's standing at, at the podium selling something or you want to be the buyer in the audience. So when do you want to be the buyer in the audience? When you Well, you want to be the buyer in the audience when the cost of what is being sold is extremely low. Because you want to buy something that's cheap and you want to be the seller or you want to be at the podium selling the option when the cost is extremely high. You want someone else to buy it and give you a really, really juicy price or credit for the item that you're selling. Now, in this case, what you're selling is an option. So when the option price is cheap, you're gonna buy it. When the option price is extremely expensive, you're gonna sell it to someone else and take from them uh, a nice juicy net credit. Now, when is an option, che option cheap and when is an option expensive? So when you're in the, just to recap, when you're, when you're, when you, you want to be a buyer or sit in the audience and paying a fee, or when do you want to be a seller, whether you're, when, when you're the auctioneer and you're collecting a fee. Now, it all depends on implied volatility. Now, IV rank is um, an options metric that is in every single options tool. Um, it's in thinkorswim. You have to know the implied volatility associated with the option or you cannot trade it because you have to know if it's really extraordinarily expensive in which case you want to sell it and if it's extraordinarily cheap you want to buy it that's really the key because you want again as i said receive a really nice premium when you sell it to somebody else now, what inflates IV rank? And IV rank is simply a measure of volatility. Now, if, more, if options makers feel that the underlying stock is, is going to be subject to huge moves, they're going to inflate the price of the option, and you're going to have a lot of volatility. So that individual stock is going to be in a bubble. And that bubble is going to be associated with a lot of uh, Im implied volatility. Now, if we sell the option, we have to do so with the anticipation that this is what's going to happen. That arrow is heading to that big volatility bubble. Now, remember, we've sold it to someone else. And at some point, we have the um, we we are mandated to buy it back. So let's say we sell we sell it to somebody else for three dollars uh, per position, and all of a sudden this arrow hits this volatility bubble, and that bubble collapses. Well, what happens to the cost of the option? Now that three dollar option that you sold, maybe now it's worth eighty cents. And if it's worth 80 cents, maybe you'll decide to buy it back uh, for 80 cents. You sold it for $3. You get to keep uh, $2.20 for each spread that you created. Maybe it's, it's provided us with such an advantage that we're going to wait till the spread expires and we're going to keep 100% of our credit. So we need to look not only for stocks in which we feel we have a great handle on the direction, but we need to look at very expensive options. 
ones that have a lot of implied volatility. And whatever is causing that volatility, it's eventually going to leak out. And the price of the option in someone else's hands is going to drop precipitously. And we're going to wind up buying it back either for nothing, in which case we don't have to do anything or we have to buy it back. Um, or we can buy it back really, really cheaply. And remember, this is a strategy in which time is on our side. Faded decay or time decay in and of itself is going to cause the option that somebody else is holding over time to get cheaper and cheaper in price. So every day that we hold the spread, that or we keep the money that someone else paid us for holding our position, it's going to get worth less and less and less. So time is always on our side. So if we want to look at a bearish credit spread, um, I just wanted to give you an example. And right here, this is Abbott Labs, and you can see that it's in a downtrend. Now, this is this is a different platform. It's actually a platform that I don't have anymore since I, um, I cleared it out. Um, but it really gave me a nice um, directional view. I use Thinkorswim now. And you can see that Abbott Labs, every time it made a move uh, to the 30 EMA, it fell. Move up, it fell. Move up, it fell move up it fell move up it fell move up it fell so we're anticipating that abbott labs to continue to take a leg down now this is just an example this is not an optimal credit spread i'm going to show you how to how to um get credit spreads that are a lot better but what we're always going to do is we're going to sell the 50 delta um call and we're going to buy the 25 delta call when we're taking a bearish position if we're taking a bullish position same formula we're going to sell the 50 delta put and we're going to buy the 25 delta put that's how formulaic it is now every now and you know every now and then there's not going to be an option right at the 50 delta, so you can take the 57 delta or you can take the 56 delta. There won't be one right at the 25 delta, the one that you're um, going to buy. You'll take the 24, the 23, or the 27. But the the general formula is you want to sell the 50 delta and buy the 25 delta. If you want if you're going to if you're bearish, you're going to do it with calls and if you're bullish, you're going to do it with puts. Now you're going to collect a credit. In this particular trade, you got $2.07 on a $5 wide spread. Now I don't like these metrics, but I'm just giving you this as an example. Because your risk here on this trade is defined right up here. Your maximum risk is $293, and your maximum profit is $207. So I don't like the metrics on the trade. What we want to do is try to get a much bigger net credit, so the amount of money we risk is substantially less, and the amount of money that the, or we that we're gonna that we can make or the credit we receive when we create the spread is a lot juicier. Now, I'm not gonna create anything that's less than 37%. I like to get 40%. I've gotten 45%. I'm gonna I'm 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 show you some of those trades. Now, here's the thing about credit spreads. Um, and we're gonna use that example right here on this five dollar wide 98 call we sell now if this we're selling the 98 dollar call that's the 50 delta call so if the stock 
since we're bearish, if the stock closes below 98, we make 100% of our net credit. Now, the reason this is so forgiving is that we sell it with a delta of 98. How far does it have to move to the downside, unlike buying a put? Well, it has to move to the downside one cent, or it can stay right at 98. So if the stock closes at expiration at 98, right at the 50 delta price, we keep 100% of our net credit. If it moves down just a little bit, we still keep 100%. And if it really moves down, you know, we're, we're, we're cooking with gas. At that sort of, you know, one of those risk-free trades, we will hold into expiration where we will do nothing. Um, each side of the spread triggers and you get a dual assignment, they cancel out and you get to keep 100% of your credit. Now, let's say it moves against you. Now you have, $207 of profit margin. So between 98 and 100.7, you're going to make some percentage of your net credit. So the stock can move $2.07 against you. You won't make 100% of the credit that you receive, but you're going to make some percentage of the credit you received. So if if you're wrong on a on a call and the stock moves 10 cents against you and the trade and the trade closes out of the money, that call becomes worthless and you lose 100%. But if you're wrong here and you sell a bearish position and it moves $2.07 against you, you still get to keep some percentage of your net credit all the way up to 100.07 which is where your break even is now between 100.7 and 103 um you're going to take a partial loss you're not going to lose 100% you're going to lose th now that's the risk on the other side, and remember, the, um, we can make 207, and we actually it was 289. So we're going to lose some percentage of that 289, but we're not going to lose 100%. So we've got an, an enormous leeway on this trade, and even if it goes against us, all the way up to 103 we still will lose only a percentage of the potential credit we could receive. And then if it closes above 103, I mean, we're really wrong. That's when we're gonna lose 100% of our potential net credit, and that's $293. Now it's gonna be very, very rare that that's going to happen to us. I'll show you the track record we have um, it is really outstanding. But I want to show you how this creates a win-loss percentage that you need to achieve in order be to, to trade profitably. Now, if you take a net credit that provides you with 30% of the width of the trade, so let's say the width is $5, and your credit is 33% of that width, well, you can lose 67%. Now, if you trade and you make, you get two winners and one loser, two winners, one loser, two winners, one loser, you're trading at 67%, that's the 33% is the net credit you received, you're gonna break even on the trade. So if your net credit is only 33% of the vertical width of the trade, if you trade with 67% winners, you're gonna wind up with a portfolio that's only gonna lose in commissions. It's not going to lose one cent in profit or losses. 
But if you trade with a 41% net credit on a $5 vertical uh, width here, um, if you trade, you only need 60% of your trades to be winners to break even because you have a 41% vertical width. Now, I know this may seem a little complicated at first, but if you do come aboard and you see how the trades are configured, you see that we're going to look for 40% or greater so that we only have to make 60% uh, of our trades evolve into winners in order to trade create a, a break-even scenario. Do so you see you, you're going to make two bucks, you're going to lose a buck 50. Same thing now. You're, you're trading at 66%, but now you're making money because you only need to get 60% winners and you're getting 66% winners. So, so for every three trades, you're gonna make 50 bucks on those three trades. Now, this is just an ex this is a way of just explaining the math behind the trading. We're gonna look to trade with 80 to 85% winners on a vertical width that's 40% or greater. Now, occasionally I will take a trade with a vertical width that's around 37, 38%. If it's a really, really advantageous trade and something that is trending in my eyes very hard in the direction that we want it to go. Now, I'm only gonna take, I'm only gonna take uh, put spreads with a um, with a bullish anticipation, not going to trade bearish put spreads. So we're always going to be selling puts. We're going to be selling the 50 delta put and buying the 25 delta put. So let me give you an example uh, on McEwen mining. This was a November 16, 2023, six dollar seven dollar put, only one dollar of vertical width. You can see that vertical width right here. Now we got a credit of 45%. That's a vertical, $45, that's a vertical width of 45%. So if the stock closed above $7, we make 45 bucks on every spread we traded. We had an enormous downside. A $7 stock could trade all the way down to $6.55. And we're still going to make some money. It's got to trade below $6.55 for us to lose anything. So we only need to win 55% of the trades if we can gain a 45% vertical width on the trades that we take. Now, McEwen Mining wound up closing above eight bucks. So we kept 100% of our net credit. Now, the way you're going to look at every trade is what is your potential loss on the trade? Well, the most you can lose on a trade is $55. So you're going to buy as many spreads as you can based on the amount of money you want to risk. So let's say you're willing to risk, say, $500 per position. You simply take the maximum loss you can take, which is $55, divide it into 500. It's obviously a little bit less than 10. It's nine or it's eight. I don't know exactly. But you're, so you're going to trade eight spreads because you're willing to risk 500 bucks. So if you traded eight spreads and made $45 a spread, that's really nice money on one trade. And all we need to do is win 55% of these to be very, very profitable. Now, let's take a look at a long-term chart. And this is what I like to do. Now, this is the um, iShare Spider Select. Well, this is the Spider, not the iShares. And this is iShare, this is Spider uh, Communications. Um, and the key moving average, which I found over 20 years of trading, it's a magic moving average as far as I'm concerned. 
you're going to trade the 200 SMA, the 50 SMA, and you're going to trade the 30 EMA. And every pullback to the 30 EMA in a bullish market is where you buy your credit spread. You're bullish or you sell it, excuse me. Sell it here, great move up. Sell it here, and I, did, I didn't put the uh, 30 EMA in here, but this is exactly where the 30 EMA, EMA is, right where these green um, bubbles are. Up you go, back to the 30, sell again, back to the 30, sell again, back to the 30, sell again, back to the 30. Now you're gonna, now you, here's where you're gonna take a loss. But so what? You've made one, two, three, four, five winners in a row, and then you're gonna take a loser. And I'm telling you that we are going to take losers. The question is whether 10% of our trades will be losers, or 15% of our trades will be losers, or a maximum of 20% of our trades are gonna be losers, and the loser will occur when a long-term bullish trend changes. But what we're going to do is then we're going to, that 30 EMA is going to swing down fast. And we're going to sell a bearish put spread every time it pulls back to that 30 EMA. Sell a bearish put spread, sell a bearish put spread, sell a bearish put spread. And these trends tend to hold up for a significant period of time. Um, Sector direction tends to really hold up over long periods of time. So, you know, iShares Communications, iShares Tech, um, iShares Healthcare have really, really been strong for, for almost two or three years now. Um, iShares Utilities um, has been in the dumpster for a long time, we're going, you know, we're talking about 24 to 30 months. And the one that's kind of vacillated is iShares Energy. But iShares Energy can also be traded very, very profitably because energy tends to make six month moves. And right now it's creeping up. Now, I don't know why, but I, you know, I can't, I, I don't need to know why. Um, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to go into long, a long treatise about my about my fundamental take on energy. I mean, I believe um, we have a contracting world economy, and usage is actually going to decrease, and we're going to have an abundance of energy. But obviously, the majority of traders don't agree with me because they're taking the iShares energy sector up, and I'm going to show you exactly what we do and how we look at it. Now. Again, I just wanted to go over the formula with you because you can try it at home on your own. The key here is finding the best trading opportunity. Obviously, you want the optimal formula, and I'm giving you the optimal formula. You're going to sell the at the money, a call if it's uh, bearish, a put if it's bullish. That's the 50 delta. And you're going to buy the out of the money, 25 delta call if it's bearish, put if it's bullish. You're gonna collect, collect, I would never touch a trade with a vertical width of 33%. I'm looking for upwards of 40% vertical width. Now, I used to have a scanner. I don't have that scanner anymore, but let me tell you, I never really used it. I have a hit list and I have a, I have a very specially configured hit list and I'm going to send you out some stocks in my hit list every Sunday night, but every Sunday night is sort of the flagship um, newsletter. Although I send you, I just sent out, um, I, I send out multiple um, updates during the week. In fact, so many, I think I send out, a, you know, a grand total between the, the three services I run, probably over 20 emails a week. And I've already sent out close to eight or nine in two days. But we're going to look at my hit list. And I have it segregated by sector and subsector. 
So we're going to look at the credit spread that generates more than a 33% vertical width. I like to trade very liquid underlying symbols. Every now and then, I'll take a shot at an illiquid one. You can still make great money because you're trading a spread, but the problem with an illiquid spread is that the market makers shift the midpoint around. Like, like it's hard for them to determine what it is because there are not a lot of traders and there's not a lot of volume on the spread. So, I mean, I remember uh, about a month ago, I opened up um, Thinkorswim and I had a credit spread that was, that was down 555%, which is, which is mathematically impossible. It was just because the market makers couldn't find the midpoint. And it very, very quickly corrected after my eyeballs popped out of my head. I called Thinkorswim and I said, what the hell is that? And they said, oh, it's just, a, uh, it, it's just a temporary imbalance. It will be corrected. And when it was corrected, it went from down 555% to up. Um, and we want our credit spread to align with our technical direction or our view that the underlying stock or sector is going to move. Now, um, this is Wayfair. And um, you can see it's got a nice trajectory to the downside. I don't have any metrics um, calculated on this trade. I do here on this. This is XLV. This is healthcare. Now, I configured this deck quite a, quite a while ago. Since this time, healthcare has really become the third strongest sector. First is telecommunications um, or communications. Second is uh, tech. Third is healthcare. Um, jockeying back and forth are financials and as the fourth strongest uh, sector, bottom sector for the last three years has always been utilities. And you can see that if you took a trade here, right here, you would wind up with a maximum risk of 164 bucks and a maximum reward of $136 simply by employing our strategy. Now, we're going to employ this strategy for, for the most part on spreads that expire six weeks down the road. But we want to take monthlies. So every now and then, we're going to have to take a monthly that expires in 28 days, or we're going to have to take a position that expires in 48 days. And I've taken positions that expire in three months. But for the most part, we're going to look at positions that expire about six weeks down the road. So the critically important metrics on a credit spread, and these are all the things that we need to take into account, obviously our anticipated direction. If it's bullish, we're going to sell a put spread. We want to know the expiration date. It's going to be approximately six weeks out. But if we don't have that monthly that has all the volume, we can push it out or pull it in. Every trade has two arms. It's real easy. On a bullish position, we're going to sell the 50 delta by the 25 delta. The premium is important. The premium width is more important. On the trade on MUX, which is McEwen Mining, we only got $45 premium but it turned out to be a 45% vertical width. And that is what's really important. IV rank is also critical. We wanna know that implied volatility on the position is extremely high because it's a metric we want to leak out of the trade as it just sits there and does nothing. And, and implied volatility leaks out quickly and as the trade evolves over the course of six weeks, when we pass the first two and then move into the month that the position expires, theta decay really goes to work on the position. You know, I've had a lot of I've had a, I've had a lot of traders email me and ask me, does theta decay occur over the weekend? And the answer is yes. When you look at a position, it says 42 days to expiration. That includes Saturday and Sunday. So this is a rare position 
that you make money on Saturday and Sunday because Theta Decay is operational. And when you open up your trader on Monday morning and the market begins, because options really don't assume their correct price, I mean, pre-market, they just don't move, can't trade options pre-market or post-market, you're going to see that if the price of the stock has not budged, you will have more profit on the trade from theta decay that occurs on the weekends. And that's real nice. Again, just to reinforce 45 days to expiration, we're going to sell the 50 delta, we're going to buy the 25 delta, 33% minimum. Um, obviously, if it's 33%, we need 67% winners. We'll get, well, you know, we anticipate 33% losers. That's a very poor risk reward. I don't like it. So the best practices is to exit seven to 14 days prior to expiration to avoid what's known as gamma whip. And gamma whip is where just a slight movement in the underlying stock can change abruptly the value of the credit spread. But lately, on, on the last few trades, we're going to hold them right into expiration, and we're going to take 100% of our credit. Um, we're going to look for it to trade right into the end, uh, right into options expiration. Now, it's really simple what I do. I look at the best performing sector. Now, that's very, very easy to determine. And then if there's a subsector within that sector, we're going to look at those stocks. So at the time I created the slide, energy was the best performing sector. And the best performing subsector was in energy, was in oil services and drillers. So those are going to be the stocks that I'm going to look at for our for potentially our best winners as long as they have appropriate implied volatility. I'll tell you the subsector that I really like right now within tech is cybersecurity. Um, Okta, um, Palo Alto Networks, um, CyberArk, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, and, and actually, they all trade under um, an ETF called HACK, H-A-C-K. I would love to buy HACK, but it just has no, um, it's an illiquid, it's got options, but it's totally illiquid. But I, but I think our next position is going to be in cybersecurity. It is just really strong to the upside. It's out, it, it's a subsector that's outperforming its overall sector, which is tech. Now, I, just before I move on, I just want to let you know that in communications, a lot of people are a little bit confused about communications, and communications contains Facebook, it contains Google, uh, it contains Netflix. So when you see XLC communications, that's what's driving it. All the uh, chips and the rest of tech um, sits in XLK, um, and that is uh, and that is tech. Now, for some reason, energy is showing a lot of relative strength right now. And like I said, the subsector I'm really, really paying attention to right now is um, is um, uh, cybersecurity. Now, this was a scanner I used, and what it did was it laid out all the best trades based on IV rank, but it really just didn't perform very well. Um, it wasn't bad, it kind of gave you an idea because it looked at premium width, but a lot of the directional trades here were just not really great. They weren't trading in the strongest sectors. Um, the directional position that the, that the scanner took was not optimal, and I'll tell you, you know, there's no AI scanner. A scanner is a scanner. It, it, it has a fixed algorithm. It's going to go, it's, it's going to give you a trade based on whatever that algorithm tells you. And we can outthink every single scanner. 
if you arrange your hit list in terms of sectors and subsectors, you're going to see every day that one block of green or that one block of red, and it's going to pop right in your face. And so take a drink of water. Now, recently, one of our close trades was Vertev. Now, Vertev is um, is tech. It's um, um, it's networking. Now, Vertev, we sold the uh, 4250 put. That's the 50 delta. We bought the um, uh, December 50, 2023, 3750 put. We got a credit of two dollars. On for soon wasn't wasn't the best configured trade because because we had a well we had a forty percent vertical width on the trade and we bought it back at thirty cents so we made a profit of a buck seventy per spread that's an eighty five percent winner Vertev right now is trading in the sixties. So we didn't, I didn't anticipate it would make such a strong bullish move or I would have bought a call. But that's where it's trading right now. And um, it, and, um, it announced earnings and its earnings were eh, eh, not so great. It dropped and then man, buyers just stepped in and are still rocketing Vertev to the upside. Now there's Okta. There's our cybersecurity stock, and I'm going back in there to look at Okta and one of these again. We sold the February 16th 82.50 put, the 50 delta put. We bought the, excuse me, the 25 delta put, 77.50. Look at that vertical width, 45%. Our credit limit was $2.25. And we got to keep 100% of our net credit. I mean, Okta traded all the way through 8250, way up. Now, since then, it's come back down and it's trading in the 60s. And um, I'm very, very uh, inclined to maybe go after Okta again, although Palo Alto Networks, after taking a bit of a beating on earnings and actually poor forward guidance, is starting to move up strong. Now, our performance so far, we have 37 trades, 32 winners, five losers. That's an 87% win rate. And I will not take a trade with a vertical width less than 40%. Every now and then I'll go to 39 or 38% if I feel really strongly that this trade is really gonna lock us in for a winner. I mean, I really like it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you one that I, that that we just took. Now, I I just put this up be, um, because I I think it really makes a really good point, and the point is is that those that can do and those that can't do teach. So, and the difference between this service and any other service that that you may encounter is that I take every trade that I recommend to you live in my own real money portfolio. I can tell you that with a certainty, and if you ever want to call me out on it, I will snapshot my thinkorswim portfolio. I will not show you how many positions I trade, because that speaks to the size of my trading account, but I will show you that I executed the credit spread at exactly the same price you got it, like, I don't try to get in in a few cents better or before you. I get in with you when the trade goes out. That is when I format the trade. In all the services that I do, I take every trade I recommend. So I'm trading with you. And let me tell you, it makes a big difference when not only do you have, I guess, the fee that you would pay me for the trades, but when you take the trade, you do an extra amount of due diligence and you're really careful because you don't want to lose money. I can tell you that right now.
That is one you don't. I mean, I hate to give the market money. Now, you're going to get, I'm really getting to the end, but I'm going to show you how to take a trade. So you're, I'm going to try to give you two credit spreads um, every Sunday. This Sunday I gave, I gave out two. Sometimes I'm going to give you one. You're going to get the exact price, which is the cr amount of credit you want, the stop, the targets, everything's included. We're going to manage the trade together. I'm in it. I watch it every day. And let me tell you, at bedtime, you know, some people watch a little television. Some people watch a little YouTube. I sit and I go over my trades really carefully. You're going to get multiple updates intra-week. Um, if there's any major change, um, if I change the target, if I want to take our money off the table, if, you know, if anything comes out that's different, you're going to be in that. And we're all going to exit the trade together. Now, you're going to get bi-monthly live credit spread training education. I want you to become a master at trading this. Um, and so I want you to earn as you learn. So here's the price. Now, it's only 49 bucks for the first month. And it's I, I dropped the price here for the year down to $6.98. Um, the coupon code here is save 70 bucks here at save 55%, but I'll go back to it. But I want you to know that you have a 100% money back guarantee. If for any reason in the first month, in the first 30 days, you don't like the system, you don't feel that it's for you. You don't feel that I've lived up to my promise to you. Um, to get you the percent winners that I'm proffering to you here, you just send an email to info at rightlinetrading.com or call us. I, 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 hopefully, I put, I put the our, uh, phone number in here. I may not have. It's on the website. It's 786-732-4656. Um, whoops. Here's what Rory sent me. I'm just going to put it up. It's right here. Um, $49 for the first month, $6.98 for the full year. Coupon code, save $70 or save 50%. And it's going to drop this down to $49 or $6.98 a year. On both of those, you have an absolute 30-day money back, no questions asked guarantee. And as a closer, what I want to do is I'm going to take this down for a second. And I'm going to show you how to take a trade. Um, now, now, once this opens, I'm going to move it off because I, I, I don't want to. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to type in my uh, password. I mean, this is this is my live Thinkorswim account where I uh, trade or I trade everything, and it also has a chunk of my life savings in it. Hang on one second. Okay. It's loading. I'm gonna move this over. Hopefully everyone can see that. Um, that's the Thinkorswim uh, portfolio. Now I'm gonna delete this. These are just trades I was looking at. I was looking at healthcare, HCA. Um, and uh, I'm, I really like healthcare stocks. But let me open my, let me open up and see if we have any trades that are pending. And we haven't gotten into, we got into one today that was really advantageous. I wasn't sure we would get it because I asked for a, a, a quite large uh net credit and um we wound up getting it we wound up triggering today 
um, now the thing is what what you see here is not going to be reflected in unfortunately um, and uh, you know it's it's not going to be reflected in what we um, in the metrics that were present at the time we took the trade, but we'll look at toll, T-O-L. Now, now I think, I, I've looked at a lot of metrics on homes. Now, um, uh, iShares um, property value or, or iShares real estate is really not doing well but iShares Home Builders is doing unbelievably well. And within the home builder sector, Toll is just doing outstanding. Um, so what I did was I configured an April spread. It's 52 weeks out. And all I did was I'm going to look, I'm trading the puts, and I'm going to look for the 50 delta. Now, there is no longer a 50 delta. Um, obviously, it's the metrics have changed since I took the trade. But we're sim I'm just going to show you this. We're going to sell the 50 delta. And we click it here. And then we're going to buy... The 27 delta, which is right here. Now, if we did, now there's no way we're going to get nine bucks on, on this spread. There must be something wrong here. Um, I sold the 115, which is correct. Uh, I see, I, I made a mistake. Let me, let me just redo it. We're going to sell the uh, 115 and we're going to buy the 110. So we're obviously, since we took the trade, the net credit has shrunk. And that's why we're up on the trade. We got a 40 width, 40% 40 width on the trade. And you can see right now on a, on a $5 spread, actually 260 is pretty close. Let me see where that is. Um, it is a vertical width of only five bucks. And let me, um, let me multiply that out. So it's, um, it's uh, 260, divi 260 divided by five. That's a 52% vertical width. That's the kind of trade that you want to take. Now you can see that toll is trading right at 111. We sold the 110 put. So it's actually a slightly in the money, which is very advantageous. And we just got one heck of a juicy net credit. So this is a very, very advantageous spread. Now, if we look at the chart, it's loading on toll. I don't want to do five days. Let's look at. 90 days on a one hour. You can see how strong it is to the upside and how all our metrics are pointing to the upside. It's come back a little bit, but it hasn't come close to our, um, our, fifth, our, our 30 EMA. But we are in this trade and this trade is um, already up and we're already making money on it. So that's what we want to do. And it's that simple to configure. On Thinkorswim, it takes literally five minutes. It's just hunting for the optimal stock 
in the optimal sector. You know, I took toll over KB Home and over a, a, a multiple, you know, quite a few other stocks within that sector because toll is is to, is me is you know based on what I see numero uno. It's the best of of the home builders it's making the most money. It's got I think it's got the most upside. We only need about 8% upside to make 100% um, of our net credit. In fact, I'm, excuse me, that's on a credit, that's on a bullish credit spread. We only need one penny to make 100%. So I'm gonna drop my platform. Now, now that basically, you know how to take the trade. I'm gonna put this back up and see if there are any questions. Hey everyone. Hey James. It's being recorded, Charles. How many trades are we sent per day per week? Dinesh, what you're usually going to do is you're usually you're usually going to get two trades per week. Because what we want to do after a period of time is you want to cash out two winners a week. And if you get two trades every week and you start adding them and adding them and adding them and you cash out two winners every week. Now, obviously, we're going to take the occasional loser and I'm not going to I'm never going to sit in any webinar I give and talk about 100 percent winners. It's ridiculous or even 95 percent winners. That just doesn't happen. But if we can make 85 percent of our trades, we're going to have two trades close every single week and that's what we want to do now an extremely volatile market where which i just can't find two really optimal spreads i'll just send you one but you are definitely going to get at least one trade a week and if they're there i i i mean i want to take two and that's what i'm looking for uh, i'll tell you the trades i sent out last week or let are this sunday um, they didn't trigger for quite some time, actually. It took a while. Uh, one was on um, Huntington Ingalls Industries, HII, and the other was on VEEV, Viva Systems. So I wanted to take a tech stock, and I wanted to take um, Huntington Ingalls as sort of defense um, industrials. You also sell out of the money options. I think Toll was of, of an, um, was in, I don't sell out of the monies, Mustafa. Selling out of the money spreads is, is a recipe for disaster. Because as the spread moves more and more out of the money, your net credit drops. And let me tell you, when a lot of, a lot of webinars you're gonna see, people are gonna say they're gonna make, you know, 90 to 95% of their trades, by selling um, 10 delta spreads. Now, if, if, you, if you sell um, a call or you sell a put at a 10 delta, you've got a 90% chance for a winner. But on a dollar, you're gonna take a vertical width of 10 cents. So you're gonna risk 10 cents and can potentially lose 90 cents. So as you move out of the money, your reward on the trade gets smaller and smaller and smaller because the, the possibility of getting a winner gets higher and higher and higher. That's what I was talking about by being optimized. What is the optimal way to trade? And they are at the monies. When you take your loser, it's going to approximately equal one loser or one winner, maybe off by 10%. So selling deeply out of the monies is really a recipe for disaster. I've tried it. Um, and one of the biggest losers I ever had in my entire trading career was on Walt Disney, where I traded it deeply out of the money. Um, I received 20 cents to risk 80 cents. I held it to options expiration. Um, something came out that Friday, and I wound up losing over $40,000 on the trade. 
So we do not want to take an inordinate amount of risk for a really minuscule amount of reward because ultimately you're going to get a loser and it's going to wipe out nine or 10 winners. That is a losing deal. So I hope everyone got a good feel for the system. Um, a couple of the trades that, I, that I've sent out are still, you can still take. Um, they're still operational and still active. Um, you'll get a newsletter if you come aboard and you also have that money back guarantee. You're not going to risk anything. Um, and we are going to, you know, we're going to give you that money. You give you your money back if you don't like the system. I'm very confident when you come aboard, you will like it. I go in, into a tremendous length about why I take the trade, all the metrics on the trade. And we're going to have our live sessions and I'm going to teach you how I find the best trades. And we are way outperforming the market. I don't know how the market did today, but, but, but the portfolio made really nice money. And I didn't look at the overall metrics of the market today, um, but we closed up quite a bit. So listen, everyone, I really appreciate you giving me your time. Um, and um, I hope to see you. I hope to trade with you. Hope to see you in the live sessions. And I wish you all really the, um, the best of health and, um, and uh, the best of luck trading. Take care, everyone. Have a really, really wonderful evening. Um, and bye-bye.